And welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. It's Tuesday evening. It's the first evening of the summer season officially in the Northern Hemisphere. Astronomical summer began at about 5.14 a.m. today. And boy, it was a hot first afternoon of the uh, season. Uh, for those uh, who may be wondering why we didn't have a newscast at 6 p.m., we took a major, like a massive power hit in downtown Youngstown this afternoon that uh, fried a couple of very key... Um, systems for us to be able to put on a newscast and those didn't come back online until about 540 this evening so not in time to get the six o'clock newscast up and running we're gonna try to do it at 7 or 715 this evening some of you may be watching this before 7 p.m. and um, that may be uh, something that uh, you were wondering if you were tuning uh, or, or tuning over to our station for the usual six o'clock newscast at 6 p.m. so that is what happened around here I don't think it was weather related but I am not sure exactly what happened with the uh, power situation in Youngstown earlier on today. All right, nationally, it is uh, National Lightning Safety Awareness Week. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit uh, in Weather for Weather Geeks this week about lightning, lightning safety, different aspects of lightning. We, we tend to touch on lightning some during Severe Weather Awareness Week back in March and into early April. But that's General Severe Weather Awareness Week. This week focuses specifically on the phenomena of lightning. It's all about... Uh, electrons and, and neutrons and static charges and electrons begin zigzagging downward and that's known as a stepped ladder um, as the that ladder gets lower to the ground it draws a positive charge from the ground on up in most circumstances and as the leader and that uh, stream of positive charge merge uh, it creates a powerful electrical uh, electrical current and uh, that stroke is what we see, and it travels really, really fast. 60,000 mile, uh, miles per second is the uh, speed of the light that uh, we see from lightning. Now, of course, this process can repeat itself several times along the same path, causing kind of a flickering. That's why sometimes if you see slow motion videos of lightning, you can really see what can be sometimes a flickering uh, phenomenon. And all this complicated uh, scientific process yeah it takes less than a second really really fast now there's different types of, of lightning strikes lightning strokes um, what's uh, very common is intra cloud lightning lightning that stays in the cloud uh, cloud to sky lightning is something that you occasionally see where a charge builds up between the the cloud and, and just the surrounding air around that cloud what's uh, very common as well cloud to ground lightning uh, in other words lightning striking things on the uh, ground but the charge originates in the cloud what's not as common is what we call cloud to ground lightning or uh, lightning that steps upwards um, that happens a lot of times with tall buildings that have lightning rods on uh, top of them but uh, that doesn't happen all that often with just the, the ground and and uh, the cloud uh, cloud to cloud lightning is something that you can see sometimes where you'll see streaks of lightning going from one cloud to the next it happens but it's a little more uncommon as well lightning of course very very dangerous and uh, anytime like I said last evening anytime you can hear thunder that means you're close enough to a storm that you could be struck by lightning so if you're on the lake or at the beach or playing golf and you can hear thunder well that's the time to uh, seek shelter all right this afternoon the first afternoon of the uh, summer season in the northern hemisphere uh, the date on this is wrong the first day of summer uh, last year was June 20th this year is the 21st of course this means long days in the northern hemisphere and the shortest day of the year daylight wise in the southern hemisphere the Sun's direct rays are lined up on the Tropic of Cancer here in the northern hemisphere in December the most direct rays from the Sun are aimed at the Tropic of Capricorn down in the southern hemisphere and of course that's the beginning of our winter season here in the northern half of planet Earth. And today, the longest day of the year, daylight-wise, a little less than a second longer than yesterday. And very slowly, the downward trend will start tomorrow. We'll lose a little less than a, day, uh, a, a second, I should say, of daylight on Wednesday. And by mid-July, we'll be losing over a minute uh, per day worth of daylight. But here in our location, at our latitude, in our location, uh, 15 hours and 8 minutes, worth of daylight is where we peak and it's a long way down to the nine hours and 13 minutes of daylight that we see on December 21st roughly the first day of the winter season or the winter solstice 
As expected, big change today. Uh, yesterday, temperatures uh, were not much higher than the upper 60s to around 70. We reached a high of 92 at the airport this afternoon, making it the second hottest day of the year so far. Now, there's not a, been a big temperature in uh, heat index difference today. The, the difference between the two numbers has been pretty negligible. That's because while the dew points are elevated, they're not that high, and they're certainly not as high as they were last week. We had dew points last week, uh, especially, I believe it was on Wednesday, dew points of 76, 77 degrees. Nothing like that today. Two points will be a little bit higher tomorrow, therefore heat index values will be a little bit higher tomorrow. Check out Chicago and Green Bay this evening, just baking out across parts of the uh, lower Great Lakes and the upper Midwest today. High-res visible satellite picture of the region today. Not a lot to show you other than the nice green emerald landscape that we see in mid-June. Not a cloud in the sky today. We had very strong subsidence, sinking air underneath a ridge of high pressure today. So uh, what pilots sometimes refer to as severe clear. All right, but a cold front is heading our way tomorrow. The heat and humidity will build ahead of it, and this front is likely to spark some thunderstorms, but for us in our television viewing area, this is going to be a close call. I could see where these storms don't initialize until uh, 4 or 5 p.m., and mostly down towards Steubenville and Wheeling, and over towards uh, Pittsburgh, and maybe as far north as Elwood City and Newcastle and East Palestine, East Liverpool. Maybe in those locations we'll get a quick hitting storm, but the storms are definitely more likely the closer you are to Interstate 70 uh, with the speed and timing of this approaching cold front. But then the sky clears quickly tomorrow evening, and uh, we've got better things in store for Thursday. This is the SPC, Storm Prediction Center, Day 2 Outlook, featuring a level 2 on that 1 to 5 scale risk of severe weather, roughly from about East Liverpool on south and east. It includes parts of, of Lawrence County and includes a good chunk of the state of Pennsylvania. You know, I don't think the severe weather risk is very high at all the farther north and west you go in our viewing area. In fact, we'll probably just have a dry day tomorrow in, in Warren and Newton Falls and up towards Cortland and Greenville, places like that. But again, once you're down towards Youngstown and especially closer to East Liverpool and over towards Pittsburgh, uh, you have that chance of a, a gusty thunderstorm or two. The severe weather risk mostly dealing with damaging wind gusts. Can't rule out a little hail. This is not a tornado setup across the region for tomorrow. Better things are coming, though, on Thursday with high pressure building in. We're looking great. It is going to be a fantastic day with low. So those dew points drop nicely on Thursday, and we've got another pretty nice day coming our way on Friday as this high builds through. You know, we're not looking at a lot of rain over the next seven days. Maybe a spotty thunderstorm tomorrow, maybe another one on Sunday. Other than that, it's pretty high and dry. And you know, the, the, the air conditioners are going to get a workout on our Wednesday with heat index values, say, between 95 and 99 on average in the afternoon. After that, though, I don't really see any sort of uh, extreme heat or oppressive heat uh, through at least the middle of next week. In fact, early next week, it looks awfully comfortable for a couple of days in the wake of our Sunday cold front. Temperatures compared to average, actually a handful of degrees cooler than average Monday and Tuesday. That'll put us in the mid-70s because by early next week, our average high is about 81 degrees. Um, but a couple of hot days coming our way tomorrow and on Saturday, although I don't think Saturday's heat will be uh, accompanied by the kind of dew points we'll have tomorrow. It'll be more like today, Saturday, with temperatures around 90, but uh, the dew points not all that high. So look at our model spread for the next week as a region-wide average. You know, we're probably looking at a half an inch or less worth of rain over the next seven days. Now, a couple of caveats, of course. If you get under a heavy thunderstorm tomorrow, especially down towards the Ohio River, you could see more than this. Uh, no problem. Same thing on Sunday, chance of a thunderstorm, but otherwise, yeah, this is a pretty dry forecast through early on next week. All right, so, you know, we're not we're not uh, looking at a lot of severe weather threats other than maybe something isolated south and east of Youngstown tomorrow, and, and maybe on Sunday the ingredients will try to come together. But overall, you know, this, this is a pretty nice-looking pattern overall for the next week to 10 days. We've got to get through some heat tomorrow and uh, maybe a couple of thunderstorm chances through Sunday, but otherwise, plenty of uh, warm but not excessively humid days and plenty of sunshine is heading our way. That'll do it for me tonight. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks. I will see you back here on Wednesday.